Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are back. Hope everybody's doing well. Hopefully my audio is good. I messed around with it again before the stream, but I'm just really picky about it. And yeah, we're back. Another day in the market, a new week in the market. So let's get right into everything. A lot of people in the chat already, which is awesome to see. And actually, I'll talk about the schedule a little bit later. But yeah, while people are hopping in the stream, you all know the drill. We're just going to be talking about Bitcoin, where really isn't much to talk about. On the four hour, it just kind of confirmed a bearish engulfing candle. That's about it. On the daily, just kind of chopping around, going sideways. Um, there's definitely a potential for eventually triple hidden bullish divergence, but that's not really developing yet. So we got to wait to see. And just still on Bitcoin, you want to see it continue to hold above this 200 day moving average at around 46 K That's probably the most important short term level that I would be watching. Um, but that's really it. And then for the crypto trade, this is the final one to hit the target. The end new crypto trade has hit its target. It took a while, it took about a month. But it hit the first target for about a 57% gain a month. And now officially, all of the crypto alerts in the new Discord channel have hit their targets, I believe. Um, so good stuff there. Apart from that, we're going to talk about the market. Futures are flat across the board. So I'll just go up to the regular S&P. And yeah, I'm going to cover the market. Then we'll talk about Clover. We'll talk about SPRT, EBIG, AMC, um, GameStop. We'll talk about all of those. So we'll get to that in a little bit. And then once we do that, we'll probably have time for take requests. So yeah, keep hitting that like button. Keep hitting that subscribe button. Um, we're going to talk about the market before anything else. Close at all time highs again on the S&P 500. A um, little bit of a pullback day for the Russell 2000. The ARC was green though. This is, We're going to come back to this. The NASDAQ was up 1% all time high close. Dow Jones. So, all right, let's kind of break these down individually. So for the S&P 500, um, the trend is your friend for right now. Until it starts to make lower highs and lower lows on the daily, I'm still bullish. Um, it's still within this upsloping channel, within this long-term ascending broadening wedge. And it's just kind of nuclear. I mean, the, the hidden bullish divergence is still continuing to play out, which we talked about, I think, two Fridays ago is when we first started talking about it, around the 20th. Um, so good stuff there in terms of short-term support for the s p 500 it's not super clear maybe around like the the upper 4400s could be a little bit of support from this previous resistance a little bit of another high over there that's really about it for the russell 2000 it's pretty much the only index that was red today so for small cap traders you might have seen some of those names red but i mean this one was definitely i think one of the best performers in the last couple of weeks so can't be surprised that wants to pull back half a percent it still has breaking breaking over broken over this whole entire like little range it's kind of failed to break above since the beginning of july when it broke under it so i'm still bullish on small caps i'm sure that many of you were here for this stream when i was saying you know not once but twice both the the russell 2000 which is a small cap index and the arc etf which is like the mid cap growth etf bottomed at the same level um, in two different months consecutively. If you were here for that stream, you had a really, really good market for mid caps and small caps. Since then, I've um, been talking about the ARK ETF. This was pretty much you know, the first bottom in July, the second bottom in August. And you know, after we had that stream where I was talking about that, we've just seen a very, very nice market for those names. And I also kind of shared this descending triangle idea for the ARK ETF not too long ago. And it may be breaking out of the supply line. So yeah, good to see a bearish pattern being broken to the upside. So you got a bullish breakout in a technically bearish pattern. Um, I've seen this a lot of times with descending triangles, though, where they, they end up breaking the supply line instead of the demand line. Um, and that's the thing about bearish patterns. They can still break to the upside and be bullish breakouts. They're just named bearish patterns because of the probability is slightly increased for a break to the downside. But you got to break to the upside for now and just kind of went up to the 200 day moving average and pulled back around there. For the Nasdaq, really nothing to update, it's just continuing to go higher. Dow Jones, pretty much the same thing. VIX hasn't moved too much. It's actually already back down to that 16 level, which it has been basing off of other than like kind of the end of June. It's pretty much been bouncing off this level nonstop. So we'll see if that does anything. But that's really it for the market. Kind of a slow day. Let me see where the SPY volume ended at. Yeah, I mean, volume is also kind of low. So we're just kind of, it's a little bit, I feel like everybody's a little bit confused as to what could be next. And we already had a lot of catalysts within June 
and August. Now we're kind of entering that September period. Maybe things are quiet, maybe they're not. We'll see what happens. Um, and yeah, we'll talk about probably Clover in a little bit, a few updates, and I'll read the chat before we get into that. Um, so let's see. All right, so let me read the chat before we talk about Clover and then SPRT and then BBIG, AMC, GameStop, um, some other ongoing trades. We'll talk about everything. See what's up in the chat though. Keep in that like button. Let's get to 30 likes right now. And yeah, we got a lot of people in the chat. Um, yeah, if you're in the Discord, go look at the memes channel. KTF, uh, I believe it was KTF. Let me make sure because I messed up with that last week. The lump sent like a really, really good video and I thought it was somebody else, but let me just confirm. Yeah, it was KTF in the Discord. Shout out to KTF. It's an amazing clip. If you're in the memes channel, it, it uh, definitely cracked me up. Um, sound is good. All right, good to know that. Yeah, I've been trying to, you know, be a little bit more creative with the thumbnails in the last week or so. Um, hopefully you've been enjoying them. It takes me like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, I guess. It takes me too long to do them. I'm just really like slow with Photoshop. But yeah, I mean, last week was the first ever week where every single stream pretty much got a thousand views. That's never happened before. So thank you to all the, thank you to all of you for the support last week. Um, I think it's the first time I've ever done 5,000 views. Um, only on live streams, not any videos, just live streams within a week. So that was awesome. And what else is in the chat? Cheddar Free says Biden to address the nation tomorrow during market hours. Um, so keep an eye out for that. And then Cheddar Freeze is saying, I believe around 1.30 p.m. EST. And yeah, does everybody want me to just show? Let me show kind of two clips from the Discord. And after we do that, We'll talk about the schedule and then we'll talk about Clover. This should only take a couple minutes, but let me open up my Discord really quickly. Right, let's see. It'll load up. It's not loading. So give me a second. All right. So we're gonna let's see. We're gonna look at one of them first. Give me a second. I'm sorry for this being like boring right now. Maybe I should just go into the social chat. I don't want to like share everything in the Discord though. All right, let's see if I can find a way to figure this out. Hmm. All right, perfect. I'll probably be able to find it. Okay, got it. So let's react to some clips for a second here. All right, so first off, shout out to the lump in the Discord for dropping this clip on Friday. I'm gonna just play it out for a second. The odds were stacked against us. Single parent with two boys. By the time you were 21 years old. Wait one second. That's kind of blocking. Can I move this stuff? How do I move them both together? Great. I have to do them separately. Whatever. Uh, I'll just move it back in a second. But this should be funny if you've been around Discord and stuff for a while. The odds were stacked against us. Single parent with two boys. By the time you were 21 years old. Everybody told us we weren't supposed to be here. We moved from apartment to apartment by ourselves. One of the best memories I had is when we moved into our, our first apartment. No, no bed, no furniture, and we just all sat in, in the living room and just hugged each other. Because we, that's what we, we thought we made it. And when, you, when something good happens to you, I don't know about you guys, but I tend to look back to what brought me here. And you wake me up in the middle of the night, in the summer times, 
making me run up a hill, making me do push-ups, screaming at me from the sideline of my games at eight or nine years old. We wasn't supposed to be here. You made us believe. This one made me that laugh so hard. Street. Neutron and his indicators. On backs, food on the table. When you didn't eat, you made sure we ate. You went to sleep hungry. You sacrificed for us. You the real MVP. All right, so this was for Chatter Freeze the Lump made it. If you're wondering what this emoji is, well, it's cheese that's frozen. So Chatter Freeze is in the chat right now. Um, Friday was Cheddar Freeze Appreciation Day, so this was a great clip from then. And then also, um, to, I've just watched that so many times. Like, it was super, super funny at first. It still is funny. I've just, I, I kind of already know like all the words and stuff in it. But and then today, uh, we got this. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are back. Another day in the market. Uh, red for the most part for a lot of different stocks but all right well my camera blocked that but whatever um you get the point i didn't i did not do justice to either of those um but i try to share them i mean if you're in the discord always it's uh, super funny to see stuff like that so join the discord the link is in the description and sorry for me being un unentertaining it's just I'm trying to handle stuff and I'm getting some bitrate quality warnings on my end and I'm looking at the chats, whatever. But, uh, you know, join the Discord, okay? You can get cool memes and, well, maybe that's about it, but no, I'm just kidding. There's a lot of stuff in the Discord. We talked about it last year. I'm not going to go over everything again. And, yes, get back over to TradingView and let's talk about Clover. Okay. All right, good. Everybody's laughing in the chat. Hopefully that was fun. Um, but yeah, shout out to the Lump and KTF in the Discord. No commentary needed. Yeah, the videos were good enough for sure. Um, all right, let's talk about Clover. It was red today and uh, it is what it is. I wish there was, you know, something crazy for me to bring up tonight on stream. You know, there's definitely been a lot that I've talked about in the past couple of weeks. I'm just going to be straightforward. Not much really changed. And that's, that could happen again and again and again. You're not going to get, you know, and there's been a lot of different named bullish patterns I've talked about in the last couple of weeks, but really nothing changed at all today for Clover. There was a couple of things on lower time frames, but um, no new crazy patterns or anything. It's just... Another day kind of going sideways. It's still looking good to me. We're going to talk about everything. So first off on the daily, the candle patterns do look pretty good. So you had these three very strong green candles last week or maybe the week before going into last week. So I think this was like the Friday before last week. This was Monday. This was Tuesday. Um, so here's one good thing just right off the bat. You had this huge, huge green candle. It was a 10% day. I think this was on Tuesday last week. And, you know, between Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and now on Monday, um, you have not given back those gains. Now, could they still be given back? Sure. But the good thing currently is that, you know, you have not retraced that full amount. And that's, you know, after you see a large impulse on the price, that's the first question. You know, will it just be like a pop and then you just run back down? That's always how you want to look at it, like in terms of if you're skeptical, but when you see that for multiple, multiple days, you cannot take away the gains that you made in just one day. That's a good sign, you know, just to start off with the psychology of that. And then also you had a bullish engulfing candle on Friday, you know, this green candle bullishly engulfed the red candle before it. And then today, I don't know if it's perfect, maybe somewhat of a bullish pin bar. It's not the best context. You usually, usually want to sit at the top of the wick, be towards the bottom of this wick. And then you just want to see like this candle, but like lower, but it's fine. It's not a big deal. Um, Cause on the four hour you did get somewhat a bullish pin bar um other than that not too much of a change on higher time frames maybe it's somewhat of like an inverse head and shoulders but the neckline is kind of really slanted so that's just up to interpretation i think it really is uh still the same story with all the white cuff stuff and then today maybe a little bit of a change here ever since clover topped out at nine dollars like three different times last week it's just been kind of in this down sloping wedge. We have four touches on the bottom, two touches on the top. So this is a textbook falling wedge. You have more than five touches or at least five touches. 
You broke out of it today, and it pretty much after the breakout, it just spent the rest of the day back testing. That's the common misconception a lot of traders have, where it, you know a lot of people think the second you break out, the thing is going to moon. Oftentimes, when you break out, you're going to spend a while flipping your previous resistance into a support, declining on low volume, and just kind of you know showing that what was once support or what was once resistance is now your support. And that's pretty much what happened. It broke out earlier in the day, kind of flushed at the open had a very nice pretty much v-shape intraday recovery and then it just started trending lower and lower within the afternoon but not too much of a change and then if you go on even lower time frames you have you know the potential for you know more divergence tomorrow but you did have some divergence already play out kind of the same thing there and then still the same idea of the cup and handle you haven't have yet to break that 50 percent retrace that we were talking about when i first shared this cup and handle you kind of bounced right off the 50 percent retrace today i know tar Heel was talking about that on his stream um and the wyckoff is still the same you know i don't really see any any difference in the wyckoff i still think you're in phase d still working on an, another lps and that's really about it i mean i could kind of bring up the wyckoff chart just to show it but really nothing changed since last time i streamed in turn in terms of the wyckoff uh accumulation range that i've been looking at so um i'm just gonna quickly draw it up you know roughly And still it looks just like you know something like this to me uh I, it's much easier to do this when i'm not streaming but let me see how i could most accurate kind of line it up but you get the point you had your spring had a major sign of strength and now i still think that you're in phase d working on this lps area um so you're still just again what you want in the lps is to flip your previous resistances into a support you're attempting to flip the previous you know mid eight dollar level into a support it was was it was resistance over here and 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 now you're trying to bounce off of it for the last couple of days um and then also you're declining on volume right so on this pullback this is good you see that the price has been pulling back but so has the volume so that's exactly what you want in an lps when it comes to wyckoff um you want to be declining on declining on volume flipping previous resistances into supports so far it's successfully done that now the question is will it just continue doing that and doing that and doing that and then you get all the way back down to the bottom of the range you know it's always possible hopefully not um what would really invalidate the whole entire white cough idea to me will be breaking under the previous spring area so as long as it stays above the really uh 740 ish level you i mean there is a chance of it just coming back down and then running back again maybe this falling wedge plays out and it never drops anymore and it just goes to the moon like there's so many different potential scenarios i don't know which one it's going to be i'm just trying to bring up different variables so that you know depending on what does happen instead of trying to predict everything you could just react right um so that's really it i wish there was so much more to talk about but it was just kind of a chill out day for for clover which is not a bad thing it's just it is what it is um Someone's talking about JG in the chest, talking about Bollinger Bands. We talked about those, right? It was uh, not this, not yesterday, but last Sunday's um, stream. We talked about the Bollinger Bands, how it was at the bottom of Bollinger Band. And I was thinking that you could see like a local bottom there. And you got it, right? So history repeated itself, right? It happened over here in May. It happened in, in the end of March and the beginning of March. And it happened yet again. Um, and yeah, they are kind of slowly starting to move a little bit apart they were super super tight um when we were first looking at them on the daily but we'll see what happens they are still relatively very um you know squeezed together um so if anything changes there I'll, I'll make sure to bring up on stream but there's not much that can change on the chart when you only move one and a half percent that's the main point here so i'm not trying to drag it out too much tonight just straight to the point giving an update on you know whatever i see and just gotta wait for price action and volume at this point in my opinion you take a look at Trady Ticks, see if there's anything over there. Um, keep hitting that like button, keep hitting that subscribe button. And I need to talk about, I don't want to leak that on stream. I need to talk about the stream schedule in a second here. Let me just uh, look at the options chain for Clover though, before we do that. All right, that's the wrong thing. Go over to options. Yeah, keep hitting that like button, hit that subscribe button if you did, and join the Discord links in the description. 
and all right so first off i mean i don't really typically look at these but we are seeing that between friday and today the call volume and open interest is pretty rapidly increasing we actually saw them dip off i think on uh like pretty much tuesday was the peak and then it dipped on wednesday and thursday but now they're starting to go back up again on both the open interest and the put and the volume for calls so you're seeing that difference right there um and then if we go back over here let's see if there's any change it looks like the actual open interest dropped a little bit though if we're looking at the overall chain so you might have just had a lot of expiration on friday that might have been what happened and then you're just getting new options traders um you know into the option chain i mean that's just me trying to roughly read what's happening here but that's really it. I'm, I'm still surprised i mean we've been looking at this for weeks on clover the 15 strikes like they've been pretty much around the same exact level and that's you know almost double the current stock price so those currently far out of the money um calls they're still there so they must have been for further out expiration as we were looking at this like a month ago and they were they were just like that so that's really interesting to see um and yeah before we before we talk about other stuff stream schedule so i know i wasn't live last night but here's really how it's going to be working so tomorrow i'm not going to be live um i'm not going to actually be live personally on tuesdays anymore for a while let me explain it here in a second but i'm just giving you the schedule for this week i'm live tonight obviously um tomorrow night i'm not live but then wednesday and thursday at the normally scheduled time I will be live. So I know this week's kind of hectic. Instead of Sunday to Thursday, it was only Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. So this week's a little bit hectic. Um, but next week, and the reason for that, before I get into next week, the reason for that is I'm starting college or my second year of college. So I'm just trying to get into the hang of things with all that. But next week, we're pretty much going to be going back to the normal schedule. It's going to be Sunday to Thursday night at 9 p.m. EST, um, all five of those days in a row but there's gonna be a little bit of a difference there. So um, on all of those days, except for Tuesday, I will be the host of the stream. So Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, it's gonna be just like this. Um, but on Tuesday night stream, we're gonna have a, a, a new host for Tuesdays. So it's gonna be on the same exact channel. So you just tune into this channel, but every Tuesday moving forward, I'm not gonna be home in time from college uh, to stream that's just my schedule i'm trying to kind of you know, i'm only going to college two days a week so i'm trying to you know pack in as many classes like as i can on those two days um so medi who is in the chat um we've talked about medi a bunch on stream medi does the timestamps medi helps out everybody in the discord um medi helps me out a ton so medi's just been super involved with the community he has his own youtube channel and you know starting next week again tomorrow there's going to be no stream medi's not going to be streaming tomorrow but starting next week medi will be streaming on this channel every single tuesday um for me with co-hosts so maybe some nights it'll only be medi but most of the time we're going to try and get not only medi who's going to be the main host of tuesday night streams but also we're going to get a couple co-hosts into those streams as well so yeah medi's definitely somebody i trust with technicals um i'm not perfect he's not perfect but we both try our best and if you want, you know, just to see what his content is like, uh, Medi, feel free to drop the link to your YouTube channel in the chat. I don't want to pull it up right now, but you can drop that link in the chat right now. You can all go subscribe to him. But yes, yeah, want to make sure everybody is kept up to date. Um, so the Sunday, Thursday schedule will resume next week. It'll just be Medi streaming on Tuesdays on this channel. Um, and it'll pretty much be the same type of format. He might want to do it a little bit differently, but pretty much be covering the same amount of things and it'll be cool. It'll be cool for sure. We're already working on, you know, how the structure is going to be and just wait to see as you know, I don't want to talk about too much until it happens, but definitely support Medi. Um, you know, when he's live, uh, send him tips, you know, whatever you want to do. I'm not going to be taking any revenue from his, you know, on the Tuesday night streams, I'm not taking any of that money. So whatever. Uh, is made on those streams from all of you donating will go to Medi and the co-hosts. So just want to make that clear as well. And yeah, just trying to expand the community as much as possible. And it'll also give him a good platform uh, to grow his own channel because he'll be able to promote it. So it just works for everybody. He'll enjoy it. And yeah, just want to make sure everybody is aware of everything. Vibes in the chat for Medi for sure. Appreciate all the support. And 
Let me read it. Let me read the chat for a little bit. I've been talking for a second here. Let me kind of chill out. We still got to talk about SPRT, BBIG. There's not much technical analysis I can do on both of them at this point. But we were talking about both of those names weeks ago at much lower levels. And we'll talk about AMC and GameStop. We'll talk about some other stuff and we'll do take requests. You know, the whole entire drill. Um, so my tea is definitely cold. I completely forgot about it. But let me read the chat for a second here. Keep hitting that like button. Um, Drew says, who needs college? <sighs> I don't know. Definitely, uh, doctors and lawyers. I would recommend all doctors and lawyers go to college, but not definitely not everybody needs college. Um, I don't even know if I need college, but I'm still going is what it is. Um, yeah, we're not doing tick requests just yet. I still have a lot more to talk about. And yeah, Medi dropped his YouTube channel in the chat. If you want to go check out his channel, drop a subscription and uh, watch his videos later or whatever. Feel free to do so. He'll be the new Tuesday night uh, stream host. So yeah, even sometimes on Tuesday nights, like, so I'm only going to be getting home probably around like 9.30ish, 9.40ish. So that'll be like half an hour after the normal stream time. So maybe if I get home and I've already, you know, had dinner and I have enough energy, Maybe I'll like just hop into like he'll still be streaming and hosting it, but my, I might just hop into like a call so y'all can hear me for you know half an hour, whatever it is. Champion Vibes T says, "Will he have me on stream? If anybody is interested in being in being a co-host or just being a special guest in one of the Tuesday night streams, just DM me and uh, we'll talk about it with Medi. We were, we already have two people um, that could potentially be co-hosts, and then me as well. So we already kind of have three, but." I want like five or six, just so we know that we could always kind of help out Maddie if he ever wants a co-host or whatever it is. Um, so, yeah. Um, I think there was something else I missed that I want to talk about, but I can't remember. Oh, Champion Vibes T says, will he be drinking tea? That's up to Maddie. You know, I don't know if he's a, if he's a big fan of tea, but if he wants to, uh, you know, kind of carry the torch with that as well, he could, uh, he could do that. Um, yeah, I just kind of, you know, want to be roughly kind of what I do, but also I want him to be able to have his own, you know, segments or creativity and just, you know, make it fun for all of you. So SPRT, I mean, obviously on the daily, I don't think you could call this any sort of pattern. Um, it's insane, right? And I know I say this every single night on stream, so I'm just going to take one second, right? Just in terms of education and technicals, when I was looking at this as a technically solid play it was at seven bucks right and from seven to the high from last week it went up about 700 percent so in the beginning of august if you follow me on twitter if you've been watching the streams we were talking about it at seven did i call that it was gonna go to 60 bucks absolutely not i honestly didn't even i was surprised when it just got above 20 and it ended up going to 60 so i definitely didn't think that any type of move like this would happen especially so quickly but obviously that's what happens when social media sentiment comes into things, especially with stocks that are highly shorted. Um, and it squeezed, it had an amazing, amazing move. I don't know if it's over yet. Um, I'm just kind of watching from the sidelines. I traded like this area, like this area is what I traded. I took profits, I made money off of it, but definitely left a decent amount on the table. It's all good though. Um, the SPRT, cool. You know, I'm, I'm happy for everybody who made money in this name. Um, there's really nothing I can do from a technical standpoint right here. I mean, if you consider three different uh, histogram wicks, a good island and maybe potential hidden bullish divergence on the one hour. But again, it, it's just a little bit harder to trust like technicals when there's so much volatility, um, just because technicals work best when you have traders trading normally, when you have certain outside catalysts and just unnatural moves, that's when technicals, again, the data just kind of um, isn't as maybe high probability, right? Those technicals have been developed over a century for like pretty much normal market conditions, not for necessarily these types of conditions, but definitely, you know, I started learning technicals with crypto and you've, you've seen these types of move in crypto 
many, many, many times in the past decade. So I've seen a lot of different charts and I definitely think hidden bullish divergence is one good thing. However, it's it's on the 30 minute charts on like the daily or anything. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens tomorrow. I mean, you saw that major gap at around 20 bucks to fill, but for right now, it just kind of looks like a breakaway gap in the short term. Um, but who knows? Who knows what could be next for SPRT? I mean, I don't know if it's still charted here. I think I deleted it, but this was it. We talked about it in the beginning of the month. This major cup and handle with the hidden bullish divergence on the four hour. Right over here is when we were talking about in this area. And that was, you know, eventually a really, really nice move. Another similar name was BBIG. I actually don't remember. I think somebody was requesting this like in the beginning of the month as well. Um, when we were doing take requests, I didn't bring it up personally. I just kind of reviewed it for other people, but it was in this falling wedge. It had classic bullish divergence on the daily and it was looking technically solid around two, two bucks. And last week it went all the way up to 10. I don't even know. That, does, that doesn't even include after hours. So yeah, craziness. It's just really cool to see how these, these types of names time and time and time again have really good technical setups before the crazy moves. Same thing happened to GameStop and AMC. Not only like last November when I was saying that they looked bullish, but even back in when they fell, when they fell, like if we look at this, like after the in initial like crazy runs up, in like the middle of February, they had major hidden bullish divergence on the daily. You can go back to the streams. We were talking about it, right? So that was GameStop. Same thing for AMC. You know, after the initial crazy move in January, in the middle of February developed major hidden bullish divergence on the daily and then it really really squeezed um same thing for clover before this crazy crazy run up there wasn't necessarily hidden bullish divergence on the daily but days before it went insane i was talking about how this whole entire area kind of looked like white cough accumulation right like all of this kind of looked like white cough accumulation to me back then we talked about it for a little bit um and obviously we traded it a bunch in that range and we saw the same thing with SPRT and BBIG. Now, do these technicals, you know, predict 1000% moves? Most of the time they don't, you know, maybe sometimes on like a measured move, like for example, what would the measured move of this cup and handle be? Let's find out. Probably not the high that it went to, but the measured move of this cup and handle after the breakout was about... 16 bucks so you know what i'm saying so the technicals don't necessarily predict those types of crazy crazy moves but you can use those for good good entries on all those names i just brought up and then as it as it continues to go crazy you look out for things like volume and, and social media sentiment and bearish divergence in the rsi and just those indicators that you can kind of use as the crazy moves occur but just really interesting interesting to see how many times this year we've seen some pretty bullish charts turn into something crazy right um even with fisker even with qs like it's just really really cool to see um yeah let me look at the chat again we'll talk about so we already talked about clover sprt bbig i know i didn't, re I didn't really give like technicals on sprt and bbig if you want levels on them i mean again take this with a grain of salt i'll just go on the weekly and just chart levels but in terms of support this is pretty much the support I'd be watching on on SPRT around like 18 to 22 bucks. Like this little range it used to be resistance. And then also on the daily, you have a gap fill at 20. I'm on the weekly chart, so you can't really see that here. That would be probably the most important support range I see on SPRT in terms of resistance. If it decides to go crazy again, probably around 50 bucks, a psychological level, but also this high from 2004. Um, another $33 high from oh four as well so that's really all i can do there if you want to take a screenshot if you you know if some of you are in these names those are the most important levels i see on sprt that's really all i can do um and then for bbig first off six dollar is your gap fill or 593 is kind of your gap fill on the weekly um but also the daily and then you know really like 940 from like where this candle kind of closed and where this candle topped out Will be your resistance and then the supports there as well that's all i can do you know we talked about them down at these levels at this point i i don't know where either of them are going next but those are your levels and then uh yeah amc if you're a premium member this was a fun trade about 40 percent profit in a week and then today decided to to make a nice move again it was up like i think like 10 percent at one point and you have 
um, triple hidden bullish divergence on the one hour that's currently playing out. Um, eventually, this could, however, I don't know if it ends up making a higher high here in the MACD and can't get higher than the previous line, it could turn into classic bearish divergence, but that's that's way ahead of time. I don't really want to kind of anticipate that just yet. Um, for AMC, I just think 40 bucks. You know, you could see if I just chart it, what was your resistance over here? And then it flipped into your support. You back tested it. You flipped your previous resistance into a support. So I always got to zoom out and look left on your charts. Um, so 40 is really the you know easiest support, even psychologically. And then resistance like 48, just from last week's highs. Um, yeah, it already hit the first target of this premium trade. Second target I put was around like 50, $51 from that previous support in June. That's really it. Um, GameStop, what's up okay today? I was looking at this. Um, I don't know if I have it charted still. I think I might, have, all right, there we go. So I was looking at this last week, this kind of like triangle pendant pattern. It looks like it broke out of it today, made a nice move and then pulled back. Um, I mean, this trade, nice. You know, the trade I alerted exactly a week ago on GameStop, it's already up 26% since the entry. But literally on Tuesday, it was $3 away from the target at the high. Like last Monday, exactly a week ago, I alerted GameStop to everybody for free at 165 in the Discord and on Twitter. And on Tuesday, literally the next day, it went up 27%. And it got up to 226 the day after I alerted it. But the target was 229 So $3 off there. Now we're just kind of waiting, hoping that it eventually still does hit that target, even though it pretty much got there. But just a waiting game for right now on GameStop. Um, you know, I just say this whole entire range could kind of be support. It's where you kind of bouncing off of last week, you know, around like really around 200 bucks, give or take $5 higher or lower. And then resistance just last week's highs as well. So nothing too crazy there. Um, futures are still flat, by the way. And that's most of the recap um, in terms of the ongoing trades. The Blackberry trade, it's up 5% since the entry. Um, we talked about this, I think, last Thursday. Uh, where you have kind of this white cough accumulation, right? So what I'm thinking is Clover is around over here, but Blackberry broke out of a white coffee in range. It's not perfect again, but it, it looks kind of white coffee to me. And then it have what's known as the backup. After the breakout, you back test your previous resistance, flip it into a support, and then it runs again. We traded this with, with options if you're a premium member. The entry was not great. Um, it was the day that all of the, uh, or the explosions happened. Um, and the market was turning really red. So it wasn't the best entry within the day after it went back up. But, you know, for the BlackBerry swing trade, which was not premium, um, it's up 5% since the entry got hit in bullish divergence. As long as it holds above like 10 bucks looks fine to me. For the X trade, I mean, the X trade, the US Steel trade started off really, really well. Almost got to the first target and then pulled back. It's still up. It's still in profit about 7%. Just, uh, again, this was a three year cup and handle. Okay, so it could take patience. It could take patience. It already has taken patience. I think it's been around a month. Um, and then the dock trade, uh, this might be one of the slowest stocks I've ever seen in my life. I mean, this thing just doesn't move. All, all I wanna see is it hold above 18 bucks. That's where it's trying to double bottom off of, but that barely moves. Oh, I didn't even notice this today. Wow, so the CZR trade, I learned this last Monday. I already hit the first target last week for a 12% gain, but might be on the way to the second target. It actually got pretty high on Friday. Um, but again, it is already probably hit the 88. Yeah, almost hit the 88% retrace. It's already made a very nice move since the entry. Um, and then finally, the win trade is still just kind of showing some resistance around that first target. It already hit it last week, but yeah, that one of two level. I, had, I think I had this charted when I put out the trade idea. Um, it's just still showing resistance there. If we can get above it, it could probably see the second target, but obviously no certainty there. And that's your recap of the day. Okay, so that took me about 40 minutes, a little bit quicker than usual. There wasn't too much to update on Clover tonight, so that definitely saved some time. Um, and yeah, that's really it. So I'll probably stay live for maybe another 25, 30 minutes or so. Um, and let me see what's in the chat first. I'm gonna do a take requests in a second. Um, For all you experienced here, what's an average volume size you want to be trading at? I've been, I've seen some with over 20 mil not move at all. 
uh asking for okay. uh to answer your question koki9281 for me personally this is not like a rule like sometimes i break the exception but or i make an exception but typically i want to see over a million volume on the stock but again it depends a lot on the market cap as well um so i mean if you have a if you have a one dollar stock a million volume is really nothing right um and then also if you look at the market cap that also comes into play and those kind of all combine but just typically for most mid caps and stuff uh i look for around a million or higher um but again it depends i mean just the thing i really want to see is like i want to make sure that the bids and the asks are you know not really spread apart i don't want to see gaps every single hour on my hourly chart you know there's a lot of charts especially otcs and lower volume stocks where it's just harder to see let me think of like a low volume name i'm sure a lot of you can help me out here but um i'm just thinking of a random stock that might have a gappy one hour chart i don't eh, that's still fine what's like a gappy chart somebody help me out in the chat um <laughs> the, the lumps of anna help them out but like what's like a low volume stock like it just an otc somebody just name an otc all right pxs so for example um something like this like you know what i'm saying where if you go to one hour chart like you can't even see like half the candles like these are you see these little like green like things like those are technically candles but you really can't even see them so when when something looks like that to me that's typically when i don't personally trade it i just don't want to have something weird happen or, you know gap ups i mean gaps gap ups are great but like gap downs um, just a bunch of funky stuff going on. And then also just from like personal experience um, last year when I was kind of trading, when I was like more of a beginner and I was trading uh, sm like, you know, small caps um, and penny stocks. Uh, you know, one thing I did notice was like, for whatever reason, a lot of those types of names were like the names that I kind of, uh, you know, had bad, bad luck with, but like, it's, it's kind of interesting where like, you know, sometimes I'd be trading like some sort of like small uh, biotech company. I'd wake up one morning, they had a failed FDA approval and I, my stop order didn't even fill. And now I'm down 30%, like just something like weird just, that's you can't really expect. So it's just like for me personally, I feel like a lot of the times when you have those smaller companies, you really have to do a lot more fundamental analysis so that you can make sure you're not going to randomly wake up to some random news that drops the stock 30% or whatever. So. And again, that could happen to anything. It's just in terms of like probability. Personally, I've just seen it happen a lot more with like the smaller stocks um, where I wake up to something horrible happening to the company um, and the stop loss didn't fill or whatever. It's just, just personal personal experience. But again, if you're making money trading OTCs and, and like, you know, micro caps or whatever it is, like I want everybody to be making money. So you gotta do what's best for you. I'm just telling you what I personally prefer. Because um, a lot of newer traders, you know, have two common misconceptions a lot of new traders think one that you need a stock with a low share price if you have less money in your account um well most brokerages give you fractional shares now so that's not true and the second point a lot of people make and this is semi true is that you know you can typically get larger percentage gains um on you know smaller companies in the stock market uh, which if you're only playing shares that that's definitely could be true a lot of the time but again that's where options kind of come into play where if you could trade facebook microsoft apple options the stock prices maybe move two percent but you could double your money right um so it's just there's a lot of ins and outs of all that stuff um what else did i miss in the chat yeah hopefully that answered your question Drew says, where do you view futures charts? I use TradingView. I think you can get the, the real-time data. I don't have it um, for futures, but um, I think it's like 10 or 15 minute delay. And I don't really care too much because I'm, I'm, I rarely look at futures overnight. I just kind of look at what they're at and I just, you know, I don't really chart them too much. Uh, but yeah, TradingView is, unless you buy the real-time data for futures, it's not, I don't think it's real-time or at least for stock futures the ones I have maybe like I don't know metals futures are real time I have no clue um but uh most websites like uh CNBC and Yahoo Finance or uh you know CNN or whatever market news source you use Fox like whatever it is most of them have some sort of a feat of a futures page 
um, on their website, which are most of the time real time. I think TOS also does have futures. Um, symbolic bass or bass says, uh, where's the website for a subscription? I don't know which uh, subscription you mean. Um, you're talking about premium. That link is the first link in the description. I don't like talking about premium too much on the stream unless I'm like recapping a premium trade or if there's some sort of a premium sale going on. Like last week I talked about premium like every night because we had a sale. But if there's no reason for me to, I don't like kind of, you know, just bringing up every single night. It's there. It's always the first link in the description if you ever need it. Um, and it's in the Discord as well. If you were asking about that subscription. Um, what else? Oh, we got Homeless Zillionaire in the chat. Big shout out to Homeless Zillionaire. Um, who's been shouting shouting me out a ton on reddit. I've been seeing all the posts. I really appreciate it Let's get some vibes in the chat been helping to grow the stream um, get more follows on the Twitter Just all of you whenever you're sharing, you know my streams and my Twitter. It really does help out a lot So I appreciate all the support from everybody um, Remember we're not doing take requests just yet So you're gonna have to retype all those takers you just dropped in the chat always wait for me to say we're doing them I might I might have said it before I might have messed up. I'm sorry. You're gonna have to drop them again because it's just too hard for me to scroll all the way up in the chat and look between the messages and take requests. I kind of like having them all together. So right now I'm just reading like the chat for questions, but we're gonna do them very, very shortly. Oh, I think you're talking about the trading view subscription. Um, you just look up the trading, just go on Google and search up uh, trading view real time data. It should be there. Um, all right, yeah, sorry for the confusion about the take requests. We're gonna do them, we're gonna do them right now, so. No promise I'm gonna be able to get to all of them. I'm just gonna do as many as I can, like 20 minutes. But if you want me to take a look at the ticker for you and uh, break down the chart, drop the ticker in the chat. Don't request anything that was up over 30% today. The reason for that is because personally on swing trades, I don't like chasing. Um, so if something went up 30% in a singular day, I like waiting it out to see you know, more data on the chart. Um, you definitely can day trade things when they're up 30, 40. However, you could day trade something up 200% if you see a good you know, 10 minute, 15 minute setup. But I, I'm only looking at all of these chart breakdowns in the eyes of a swing trader. I day trade as well. Um, premium members know that. But on the stream, everything I look at is in the eyes of a swing trader, not a day trader or a long-term investor. That's like the point of the stream, teaching about swing trading. So I have videos about fundamental analysis on my channel you can find. I have videos about day trading on my channel you could find in the course if you want those. Or you could just ask in the Discord. But just a reminder for new people, the stream is mainly for, for swing trading education which is why all these take requests I look at, you know, on the daily and the four hour and not like the five minute. And I don't look at them on the weekly most of the time. And uh, apart from things up over 30%, don't request anything that IPO within the last month. I need data on a chart to analyze it surprisingly. And then finally, remember, I'm not a financial advisor. So let's get to it. These are only my opinions and I am most likely wrong about something every single night. We already looked at AMC, it'll be in the timestamps after the stream is over. But 40 is the support that I'm watching on AMC and 48 is the resistance I'm watching on AMC. Uh, New Channel Flux Labs, but wife, take that. I think that was a uh, joke. I don't, I don't, I don't see any actual wife taker. And here's the thing: a lot of people put like, uh, like funny takers in the chat, like as a joke. But with all these new cryptos, like you could probably put in like hot dog and it'll pop. It's there. You could probably put in um, uh, what's something random? Burger. I don't know, I'm just thinking of random names. Burger. There you go. You got a burger coin. Like, so it's like now there's like a taker for everything which makes it confusing sometimes. And we've just had situations where I think somebody's joking, but they actually want to look at whatever random crypto it is. I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm just going to keep it to kind of, I might be messing up. But I'm going to try and keep it to one ticket per person for right now. They already dropped these in my, I did. Where did I end? All right, so QS, ALLO. Um, did I put Beam in? Yep. Neutron Flux Lab says, just wanted to pop in happy TA and charting. Got to go. Have a good one, Neutron.
Yeah, there is a clown crypto. We've charted it many, many times for the lump on the stream or the guy in the chat. Uh, all right, SoFi will be the final one of the night from Maxime, if I pronounce that correctly. Um, See, so I'm gonna drop some dashes right now in the chat and this will be, I think that was about just eyeballing it, probably like 25 or so tickers, it looks like. Um, but yeah, drop some dashes in the chat. If anybody's asking about tickers, mods, just remind them that we're done for the night. But yeah, let's look through these. We got a lot to look through. It'll probably take us 20, 25 minutes. Um, well, all right, Dash. We're going to look at Dash for KTF. Do you mean the stock or the other crypto? I'm going to go with the stock. If you don't mean the stock, um, then what was I going to say? All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the stock on my watch list. If you want me to look at the crypto, just correct me in the chat. But we'll look, we'll look at that for you, KTF, um, because of... Uh, the video you sent in the memes channel earlier we'll give it to you all right um but that'll be the final one all right first off baba i've traded baba many many times before are right, you want to look at this stock okay we'll look at it next but i've traded baba a bunch of times before right now for like really for the past like two months i don't think i've touched it um it's just too many gaps for me i it's you know like pretty much every single day is a gap down or up it just makes it so much closer to gambling that I just don't like it too much. Um, you know, regardless of the gaps, it's still just in the downtrend. So it really hasn't changed much. These are your levels, you know, they're charted on the right side scale, but the orange numbers, those are all your supports and resistances. And that's really, it. I don't really see much of a pattern. I don't see much divergence. It's just kind of still in a downtrend um, and still gapping around. So I'd, I would just like to see us make higher highs and higher lows for me to start getting a little bit more confident. Next up is Dash. Uh, maybe this is a better way to look at it. Let's see. I still think it's in some sort of like a rising wedge. Might have had it charted incorrectly, but you got like three touches on the top, two on the bottom, regardless of how you chart the bottom. Um, so yeah, you could definitely see it's still it's in an uptrend. It's making higher highs and higher lows, but it is starting to kind of tighten up a bit in this range. Um, I do like, however, that it has reclaimed back above 186, which was like a mini support from January and a resistance in July and at the end, yeah, twice in July. And that's not your support. So as long as it can hold 186, that's good. Your short term resistance is uh, 195. We'll see which way it breaks. That's really about it. Or dash then XL, um, alternate bat harmonic maybe. Yeah, pretty much an alternate bat. Um, already hit the PCZ area and kind of bounced off of it with classic bullish divergence on the daily. MACD short term resistance is around 743. After that, you got nine bucks, and then short term support is 541. Those are your levels. DraftKings, very good. Um, we were wa we were I, can't, I haven't looked at DraftKings in a while, but we were watching it over here, hoping that it could break above the 200 moving average. It did that, and it got back above 56. Above 56, I like DraftKings. That was resistance over here. It was support over here and resistance. Now it's back above it. Maybe even a back test could be a decent entry if there's more variables there. Not financial advice. I'm just saying from a technical standpoint. Um, but. I just like it above 56, next resistance is 64. There's not much of like a pattern or anything. It's just, that's an important level to me. Um, CEV, next resistance is 938 from these highs and these two candle lows. Support's probably like seven bucks, the major support, so you're kind of in between them. Not much divergence, did not fill the gap to the downside, but you do actually have hidden bullish divergence on um the four hour chart so if that can play out maybe it runs you back up to 200 day moving average around 10 bucks or something but you still have that uh 938 resistance first um tilray it's just trying to hang on to like 12 bucks i mean i know it's at 13 right now but it's kind of bottomed off of like the mid 12s twice i just want to see it hold above like this this area in this in this vicinity Otherwise, eventually there is a gap fill at 952 if it cannot hold that. So it's all about holding 12 in my opinion. If it can do that, next major resistance on the daily is 15 bucks from your low in January of 2020. And I don't know, maybe you extend it out a little bit. Maybe it looks like it's uh, 
potentially breaking out of like a descending channel. Um, somewhat classic bullish divergence on the daily. It's not perfect, but about the same low on price, higher low on your MACD and RSI. That's really it. Matter, port, ascending, broadening wedge. Your zone over here is like 14 to 14.50. That was resist. It was support over here, resistance, support. That was pretty much it. But I just want to see it stay above that zone. It's just within this like long term ascending, broadening wedge, in my opinion. Short term resistance is around like the mid $16 level. If it breaks that, it could retest like 17, 20 ish. And then above that, I mean, then it could go crazy. But those are your levels. Can't really do much apart from that. Zynga is up next. It's kind of trying to work its way up to this gap fill um, around like 964, which was also previous support and resistance. So that's your major level to the upside. Major level to the downside is 778. So you're quite literally in the middle of a major, not like an actual trading range, but just like support and resistance range. Um, that's all I kind of see here. There's not too much data after that gap down to really talk about much else. So that's really your chart right here. It's very simple. Wish. If you're a premium member, I think, uh, no, Clover was the bigger winner on Friday, but we, we traded some lottos on Friday. I think Clover calls one up 200% and then Wish calls one up like 100%. So we made like 100% profits on Friday. And then today it actually continued going up, but there were lottos, so the calls expired on Friday. Um, but yeah. On last Thursday night, if you're a premium member, I sent this chart in the watch list. It looks, it looked at the time pretty much something like this. None of the uptrend had started, but it was like the apex of a falling wedge. There was hidden bullish divergence on the one hour, came back down to this previous base level. And on Friday morning, right off the rip, it broke out. I shared a options I lotto ID around over here with premium members. I think I wanted to this area intraday or something. Pretty much went up to around like 710 or something on Friday, I think, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And then today it just ran again. So yeah, nice breakout last week. Good, good, good time on the 15 minute chart. If we look over to the higher time frames though, you're still under 750, which was roughly your previous all-time low from June. So that still is your resistance that you would need to break above. If it gets back above it, then you got 879, your previous support from July, and then after that the gap fill at nine. In terms of support, probably this area, this uh six. 50 to $7 areas, your short-term support for Wish. Um, theme is up next. You have classic bullish divergence on the daily. Down sloping channel. I'd say your support's around 26. And then after that, uh, 21, look at that, that was your high from 2018, and then it was your low in May of this year. So those are your two supports, resistance, I'd say strongest one I see is around 37 from these two highs over here, uh, this high and this high, and then like it was support for a few days in here. Those are your levels. And this is iGate Pharmaceuticals. Trend is not your friend right now. I don't like this under 226 from a technical standpoint. That was your previous all-time low. It came back down to that level. It gapped under it. Um, it gapped down. So, I mean, yes, it easily can. And I would like for it to run back up, fill the gap. Maybe it rejects it a little bit at first and then it breaks above it. Flips into support. Like, who knows what could happen? But I, I just want to see it start reversing first. And I'm not telling you, you know, if you like this fundamentally, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying personally, as a swing trader, I would at least want a solid support level historically to be trading off of. And right now, all you really got is your, your recent all-time low at like 144. So I think it needs some work from like a technical standpoint. You know, I don't know what it looks like from a valuation standpoint at these prices. I don't know anything about the company, so I can't really speak on it there. So I just want to see it, you know, show some strength. It's been horribly falling ever since this. I mean, this whole entire year, it's been on a rough downtrend. It ended off, it ended off last year nicely. And then this year, it's just been really not good. So I just want to see... A trend reversal, right? Right now, it's just lower highs and lower lows. Um, QS, I think it's looking interesting. It might be breaking out of this falling wedge um, with classic bullish divergence on the daily. Um, I was looking at this over the weekend when I was scanning. It just needs to hold above 1931. It was kind of, if you really, really zoom in from this data, it was kind of resistance last September. 
and then it was resistance again in November. Then it broke above it, flipped it into a support for two days, and then it just went to the moon. And now it came back down to that level, and it bounced off of it. So we'll see what happens with the uh, with QS. Now we got a LLO reminder. We're not doing any more um, tick requests. If you just hopped into the stream, just sit back and learn about technicals for another 10, 15 minutes. But yeah, keep hitting that like button, keep hitting that subscribe button. Appreciate all the support in the past week. Really, I do. A L L O, twenty five. Twenty five. We we had a failed trade on this earlier, um, earlier this year, but twenty five. You know that was why the stop really helped out. The stop helped a lot on this trade. It went a lot lower after getting stopped out, and that twenty five level, right? Support in twenty nineteen, in twenty twenty, and even in January of this year. So I want to see it get back above that, because if it does get back above that, not only will it be breaking out of a historical level, it would also be breaking out of this downsloping channel slash wedge, whatever you want to call this, with pretty much quadruple classic bullish divergence on the daily, which is already kind of playing out ever since it bottomed out over here, but we'll see. Um, the RSI is still not that high, so regardless of this move it made from 20 to 24 the rsi is still relatively neutral so it does have more room but that's your resistance now we got c-a-r-a -A. i mean this whole entire area is kind of choppy historically really like 15 ish would be your resistance if you break that it could run up to like maybe 200 day moving average at 1670 in terms of support i'd say really around 12 bucks is your strongest support so you're really hoping for the break here on the daily um, this thing got destroyed on April 28th, not sure why. Like these are all of your historical levels right here. All right, if you wanna take a screenshot of it, go for it. Um, that's really it. I mean, I guess you have classic bullish divergence currently playing out. Um, not sure what this candle was, but that's interesting. And that's all I really see there. Um, appreciate the support, homeless zillionaire. Hope you're doing well. Um, uh, I did talk about BBIG earlier. Yes, it'll be in the timestamps. And then JabDab says, best time frames to consider when swing trading on the monthly or quarterly for breakouts. Well, if you're swing trading on the monthly or the quarterly, then those would be the time frames, no? Or do you mean like that's kind of like your, your outlook for your trades? If you're doing like longer term trades, I'd say probably... The daily and the weekly would, would be my picks as the time frames I'd be looking at for like, you know, longer term ideas. But for those longer term ideas, I do a lot more fundamental analysis rather than just chart analysis. So I'd say daily and weekly. Um, I, I rarely use monthly um, TA. It can definitely work. It just takes a really, really long time, right? Because each candle has a whole entire month worth of data. So, you know, uh, it just depends on, on your time frame. E L Y S. Um, it's uh, trying to break out of this little historical resistance at 450. It's just testing the 200 day moving average. A break above that could send it to five potentially. Above five, it could go insane. It has historically gone insane above five. If it cannot break that, your short term support is four. So, really, four, 450, five. Those are kind of your levels. Um, that simple. Tesla. Highest daily candle close since April. Pretty much the end of April. So that's good. We have hidden bullish divergence on the daily. What have I been saying? If you've been watching the streams, I've been saying this for like a month and a half now that I'm bullish on Tesla. I've said it pretty much since this area. Since like, I think July 20th was when I started looking at this. Or when it was testing that 200 day moving average. But... I don't know, I feel like Tesla could be in some sort of a Wyckoff accumulation. I probably have to extend these out further. Um, but I do think that this was a kind of the spring area, maybe an LPS over here, but really kind of rejected the actual breakout into phase E. So it's definitely not perfect. Um, but rough idea there. Above 727, if it can hold above that, there's room to 780 in my opinion. That was your high from April 14th and it was your low from January 29th. That's your Tesla. I mean, nice move. Uh, app harvest there's a gap fill around like 1171 support it looks like wish to me support around 664 
So that's really it. There's not a lot of data, right? So I actually have a gap up or gap down. Oh, many times the data before that gap up or gap down becomes somewhat irrelevant because typically on larger gaps, you have some sort of a, a catalyst for it to occur, such as earnings on this stock. Um, so it's like after you kind of have that take place, then all you can really be focusing on is the data after the gap down. There's just not a lot of data after the gap down to be finding any patterns or technicals on on high time frames on swing trader time frames, right? Maybe on lower time frames you can find something. But again, I'm trying to look at most of these in the eyes of a swing trader. XXII um, support is 293. It was your resistance over here, support over here, support over here, and then resistance is four from these two highs. Uh, it's actually might have been a Gartley, or might be a Gartley. Textbook Gartley. So you have a textbook bullish Gartley, it already hit the PCZ and it's bounced. Um, good stuff so far. Even bounced off 200 day moving average today. Not the best context, it's kind of in the middle of a support and resistance and I don't really see much divergence or a pattern. So it's really just like a harmonic and 200 moving average idea for now. But that 293 historically is very, very important. You just wanna hold above that in my opinion. AHT um, supports 13. You want to hang on to that for dear life. That was your previous all time low, I believe. That's what you really want to hold. If you can't hold it, there's not much resistance until 1850. That was your low from April. So you just got to continue holding it. I don't know, maybe it could turn into a inverse head and shoulders here on the four hour. Um, something like this. We'll see. Next up is NEO, classic bullish divergence on daily. Falling wedge, so major support is like 34, resistance at 43, kind of a bullish pin bar today. Not the best, um, you know, how do I put this? Not the clearest area, you're kind of in between support and resistance, but the MACD looks good, the wedge looks good, it just, I don't know, it could, it could go lower before going higher, you never know. Um, so it, I, it has potential in the short term, I mean maybe even on the 4 hour this could turn into a double bottom, first bottom and then second bottom, but I want to see what it does. Um, harmonic on Neo as well, says Medi in the chat. Uh, oh, yeah, it's, it's a Gartley. So, I mean, maybe this is your, um, you know, initial low, and this could be potentially your confirmation low, as Mitch Rain Scott Carney talk about. Uh, I mean, look at this. It hit the 786 from X to D, and it also hit the 1618 roughly from B to D. Um, so, another Gartley right there. Thank you, Maddie, for the help right there. Um, so, yeah. I mean, short term, you just want to hold 36. If you break that, then you want to hold 34. And then you have like a you know two week mini resistance at 39, a gap fill at 40, 50, 40 point 50, and then another resistance at 43 back from April. Qualcomm, it's looking pretty interesting here. I like that it's back above 145. It was your support over here, roughly. It was your high on April 29th. It was your resistance here, resistance over here. You broke, you gapped above it today, and closed above it. You even had a bullish engulfing candle off the 200 day moving average last Friday. Maybe you want, maybe you could consider this hidden bullish divergence as well on the daily MACD and definitely on the RSI. I mean, honestly, on both. Yeah, so you have hidden bullish divergence on the daily. As long as it can hold 145, and again, you have very little wiggle room. Next resistance is around like 151, and then you got a gap fill all the way up to 161. So, actually, kind of looks similar to Tesla here. Um, but that's Qualcomm. It's trying to break out. It had a little bit of a fake out in the beginning of the month. We'll see if this could be a real breakout. And then final taker of the night is SoFi. Not much of a change. You actually almost have a nearly confirmed classic bullish divergence, but roughly the same level. It uh, kind of rejected that previous support, flipped it into resistance, and now came back down to the next support, 1413 from May 13th low. If it can hold it, then it could, you know, retest the upper levels, even the gap flat 1670. If it can't hold it, I think there is room down to 13 if, if this level breaks. That's really all I can do for so far in the short term. Again, we talked about this earlier. After the gap down, you just have to mainly focus on what, what the price action is after. Everything before kind of becomes 
not irrelevant, I might have said irrelevant earlier, but just less uh, important, right? Because there's typically a reason for the gap to occur. And there we go. Futures are still flat. Bitcoin is at 46.8K. And I think that was a really productive stream. So, yeah. Thank you all for all the support. Make sure to join the Discord. The link is in the description. Hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. And if you want to learn about technical analysis, hit the like button if you didn't already. If you didn't watch the course on my channel, the link for that's in the description. So just hit the like, hit the subscribe, and then check the description. That's pretty much it. So thank you very much for watching the stream. I hope you all have a great night. And again, reminder, I will not be live tomorrow, but I will be live on Wednesday and Thursday night at 9 p.m. EST. And then next week, um, the stream schedule resumes as normal. All right. So no stream tomorrow, but yes, there will be a stream on Wednesday and Thursday of this week. So I'll see you then and have a good night. Peace out.